You're watching KTIV, Sioux Lance News Channel. Live from Signal Hill, this is News Channel 4 at 10. Good evening. Nebraska lawmakers have started a legislative session that could end with higher taxes and fewer services for Nebraskans. Deep cuts and more taxes will be debated as lawmakers wrestle with a $673 million shortfall. News Channel 4's Pat Mack has more from Lincoln. Balancing the budget will dominate the discussion here at the Unicameral. Why? Because the projected deficit is $673 million, 25% of this year's budget, and the biggest deficit since the Great Depression. The budget is going to be the overriding concern from day one. To put it in perspective, in the last three sessions, we've dealt with $521 million in budget actions, and only $299 million of that was actual cuts. Now you compare that 299 to 673, and you can see we have a very, very serious problem. The chair will recognize Senator Aguilar. Lawmakers hope to fill the budget hole without a tax increase. I believe that that is possible if the will is strong. Lawmakers are eyeing other ways, though, to boost state revenue, from taxing the Internet to taxing services like accounting and legal services to lobbying the federal government for millions of dollars. But the main method of closing the budget gap will be cutting state spending. Colleges, nursing homes, state salaries, public television, environmental programs, all potential targets. It's going to be a process that is going to take a lot of input from our citizens because uh, we're going to cut into the bone of a lot of programs. One area that may be protected from cuts, K-12 schools. Uh, schools have been making cuts. And quite frankly, some of, the, uh, uh, some of the schools don't know where they can cut again. The first major step in balancing the budget won't come from lawmakers here at the Unicameral. Instead, it'll come from the governor. Governor Johans will propose next Wednesday how he thinks the state should balance the budget. In Lincoln, Nebraska, with photographer Tony Schultz, Pat Mack, KTIV News Channel 4. During today's floor session, lawmakers selected committee chairs. Senator Matt Keneally lost his bid to chair the Business and Labor Committee for a second term, while Senator Pat Engel of South Sioux City was elected chair of the executive board. South Dakota lawmakers say they won't turn to income taxes to help balance their budget. A survey of lawmakers shows there's little support for a state income tax. The gavel falls in pier next Tuesday. Iowa Governor Tom Vilsack says he'll send a proposed budget to lawmakers by the end of the month. He says there will be a need for creative and innovative approaches to solve Iowa's $400 million shortfall. Sioux City's event center is back on track financially. Last week we told you city leaders had to make more than a million bucks in cuts to keep the project's budget in line. A committee overseeing the project has now scaled it back by $1.3 million. The cuts include more than half a million for an indoor track, a Hall of Fame display, and portable riser platforms. The Vision Iowa board says it's handed out all of the money it has for funding large projects around the state. Four communities won awards today and topping the list 12 million bucks to Shenandoah and Clorinda for a recreational lake. Cedar Rapids got about 10 million, so did Waterloo and Cedar Falls. And Clinton, Iowa got 3 million bucks for its own riverfront project. A lot of money there. Mm -hmm. A clarification to a story we reported yesterday. The Siouxland man who used the internet to lure a South Sioux City teen into having sex with him can avoid jail time if he stays out of trouble. Tuesday, a Dakota County judge sentenced 40-year-old Charles Rawwell to six months in jail, but the jail term will be suspended if Rawwell successfully completes five years probation. The autopsy of a Rock Valley man is complete, but the results aren't being released yet. Yesterday, crews exhumed the body of 87-year-old Dick Post. He died last April at the Valley Manor Nursing Home in Rock Valley. 26-year-old Christine Van Ort, Ort, a nurse's aide, told investigators she was responsible for his death. A, the Sioux County Sheriff says the autopsy was performed today and the forensic pathologist was able to establish a cause of death. The Sioux County Attorney has until January 17th to decide if the murder charge against Van Ort will stand. Nebraska authorities are still searching for a four-year-old boy who disappeared on Monday. Today, a search for Brendan Gonzalez was extended to the Omaha region. An Omaha helicopter was brought in while volunteer and police crews on the ground began combing through the area a second time. Uh, we, we just don't know where to look. Um, we, we're, we really don't have any specific area to pinpoint to focus on, so uh, it's, it's a needle in a haystack. 
Meanwhile, Brendan's mother, Rebecca Gonzalez, is reaching out for help to those outside Nebraska, hoping he's still alive. But officials are starting to point fingers at the father. Uh, we believe the last person to see Brendan um, was his father. The day of Brendan's disappearance, his father led police on a chase. Now today, Ivan Hank made a court appearance for that matter and for assaulting an officer. Police don't know why Hank ran from them. The boy's mother is also considered a suspect. Searchers say they have recovered the flight data and cockpit voice recorders from a commuter plane that crashed in Charlotte, North Carolina. Both recorders were burned in the crash, but appear to be in good shape. All 21 people on board the plane died when it crashed this morning into an airport hangar just after takeoff. Hospital morgues in southern Turkey are filled tonight with victims of an early morning plane crash there. The Turkish Airlines flight crashed and split apart in flames as it landed just short of a runway in heavy fog. Turkish Airlines said some of the 75 victims are foreigners, but it had no immediate information on their nationalities. The House of Representatives approves a bill expending jo extending jobless benefits for millions of Americans. The $7.3 billion measure passed by a vote of 416 to 4. President Bush is expected to sign the bill tomorrow, the last day he can act before there would be a disruption in the delivery of checks. More people will soon be out of a job here in Siouxland. Shafe Incorporated will close its plant near Lawton around the end of March, laying off 25 workers. Plans for the current workforce haven't been finalized, and they don't know if they will be offered positions at other plants. Shifting gears now, another warm winter day and probably our last, right, Ron? <laughs> At least our last for a while, that is for sure. Out there right now, some places falling into the 30s, with Orange City down to 32 and Spencer and Storm Lake now down into the mid-30s. Here in Sioux City, we are at 41 degrees. In Yankton, you are at that same temperature. By tomorrow morning, temperatures will be down in the 20s. Clouds will be moving in during the morning hours. And boy, those winds will start whipping up a little bit out of the northwest between 15 and 30 miles per hour. Those northwesterly winds tomorrow mean business. In other words, yeah, they're bringing in that colder air we keep talking about. We'll tell you just how cold it's going to get coming up in the forecast. All right, thanks, Ron. Still ahead, should you get the smallpox vaccination when it becomes available? Health Before has the answer. Plus, find out how the city of Sioux City can help you plan the rest of your year. You're watching Sioux Lance News Channel with Christopher Mullum, Matt Breen, meteorologist Ron DeMars, and sports with Brad Pouch. This is KTIV News Channel 4 at 10. Good evening and welcome back on a breezy evening in the Siouxland area. You can see that on our flag on Winnebago Skycam and the shake in the camera as well. These breezes are nothing compared to what we're going to see tomorrow. Kind of a harbinger of things to come. Clear skies. We are at 41 degrees, and that is still warmer than what we're going to top out at tomorrow. With that northwesterly wind at 13 miles per hour and a barometer that is steady at 29.82 inches. This morning, a few cool lows out there anyway. North Platte did dip down to 20 degrees, and other than that, just lots of 20s and 30s across the Midwest. But boy, what a nice warm-up we had take place once again, including... Here in Sioux City, 60 degrees, just 4 degrees cooler than yesterday, but this one was not a record breaker for us. Some places did have that, though. Des Moines, 67, a new record for them. Kansas City, all the way up to 71 degrees, and just a few cooler readings up to the north, but the real influx of cold air has been sitting right up in Canada, and that is going to start moving in. But boy, we have not seen anything like that so far this January. Here you go, January 1st through the 8th, these are our highs. This black line shows you where our average high for this time of year is. So you can see we've been at or above it over the past several days. Then, of course, these past two days, pretty remarkable getting into the 60s a couple of times. Here's the way things are going to change in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Our jet stream is always the dividing line between cold Canadian air and the warmer and more moist air down to the south. That's what we have been enjoying. But watch what happens to this jet stream over the next couple of days. It sinks southward very quickly. So in comes the cold air along with some very gusty winds during the day tomorrow. And by the time we get into Friday, some of us may only be seeing teens for our high temperatures. 
Otherwise, things relatively quiet in the lower 48 states here. We have just a little bit of snow going on out here in New York, but that's just about all the precipitation that we see. We do have an awful lot of cloud cover up here in Canada, and some of those clouds are going to sink southward along with that cold air tomorrow, giving us not just a blustery day, but a cloudier day than what we have been seeing as well. O'Neill, you saw 34 right now. Norfolk's at 36, and in Spencer, it's 35. And as far as those high temperatures go, boy, here you have it, and enjoy these uh, while you can. Put them in your memory bank, maybe it'd be a good idea. Sac City, Manson, and Pocahontas, all hitting 58 degrees. Sibley, 54. Sioux Center, 55. And up in Lamar's, a very nice reading of 58 degrees reported to us. And out to the west, a few 60s making their way in here with Norfolk at 63. Wayne, 60 degrees. And in Alcester today, very comfortable, 55 for your high. Here in Sioux City, averages this time of year are 28 and 8, so way, way, way above that. Our high today, 60 after a morning start of 23. And there's that record, 64 degrees, but look when that was set just last year. So uh, the past two years, we've been doing okay for this January 8th. I hope next January 8th is doing just as well. That's my personal opinion anyway. On your Storm Team 4 future cast, we had one front make its way through, but this is the bigger front right over here. It looks like it kind of moves off to the east, but trust me, it pours plenty of cool air right here into our region as well. And also you can see a few more clouds move our direction. So I think we'll see temperatures start off in the 20s. That's very comfortable for this time of year, actually. But then by the afternoon, we just don't have that warming take place. So most of our highs will only get into the 30s. So clear tonight, and as evidenced by that flag out there, just that steady breeze with us all night long. The clear skies will head down to 22 with a northwest wind at 10 to 20. Then tomorrow, windy and colder. 33 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. We may even see a few flurries from time to time. Watch for those northwesterly winds to be gusting up to 35 and 40 miles per hour. By Friday, partly cloudy, maybe only hitting 18 degrees. Saturday, 24, and Saturday morning is probably going to be the coldest of the mornings that we'll have to deal with. Then we'll get back into the upper 20s and lower 30s by Sunday and Monday, and still a dry forecast for us. Our weather picture tonight is taken by Kathy Emke from right here in Sioux City. This was taken on December 23rd, just west of Storm Lake. It was, of course, just a few of the many, many yeah. windmills <laughs> that they have over there. And I tell you what, those windmills are going to get a workout and yeah. a half tomorrow, it looks like. Yeah, with all that wind. You bet. Exactly. All right. Thanks, Ron. Well, the weather seems a bit more like spring lately. But check the calendar. You'll know it's still January. In fact, why don't you check out the City of Sioux City's new calendar? City leaders unveiled the 2003 edition this morning. If you'd like one for yourself, just stop by City Hall and pick one up. Well, still ahead, there's good news for the owners of a downtown high-rise. Inspectors say parts of the Badger Road building red tagged for repairs can reopen. What do you do when your cash is low and you need groceries? You got a cash emergency, you got a money mayday. Check, check into cash. What's check into cash? It's a remarkable place to get instant emergency cash. Four flat fees. Check into cash. We cash your first little check and then we hold it till you're paid. Anytime you have an unexpected expense and need a payday advance, check into cash can make it happen. What do I do? My car's fixed and I don't have enough cash to pay the mechanic. People from all walks of life have discovered that Check Into Cash offers a simple solution to one of life's most difficult situations. It's the smart place to get instant emergency cash for a flat fee. Check Into Cash. Check Into Cash. My checking account's low. I can't get what we need. Go to Check Into Cash. Check Into Cash. The next time you need quick cash, for whatever reason, go to Check Into Cash. It's quick, easy, and confidential. You got a money made When it comes to fitness and exercise, nobody has more new and used equipment at great prices than Play It Again Sports. If you're looking to get in shape or keep your exercise program on track, we're your store for fitness. Check out our wide selection of treadmills, exercise bikes, home gyms, and weight training equipment. All the brand names, both new and used, at the best prices. Play It Again Sports! The staff at Play It Again Sports was knowledgeable, answered all my questions, and helped me find the right equipment. Play It Again Sports! Next time on an all-new John Wall Show, stay-at-home dads, their trials and tribulations. It's hard work. It takes dedication. There is nothing they can't handle. Uh, do cooking, cleaning, vacuuming. From dirty diapers to potty training. I'm going to tell you something. 
You are a pro. I had this routine down pat. It takes a macho man and a real good guy to stay home and do what you do. Huh? Next time on an all-new John Wall Show. Thursday at 2.30 on KTIV Channel 4. Health Beat 4 is brought to you by Mercy Medical Center. Welcome back. With a recent plan released by the president, talk has grown across the country about the smallpox vaccination. Tonight on Health Before News Channel 4's Christy Bettine tells us what the plan will mean for Siouxland. In the next few months, certain public and medical personnel across the country will be offered the smallpox vaccine. It's an effort to prepare the country in case of a biological terrorist attack. In Iowa, 800 workers at hospitals and public health departments will be vaccinated, but they won't be getting the smallpox virus in the shot. Getting Vaccinia. Vaccinia is a similar virus to smallpox, and Vaccinia actually causes what they call cowpox. So people cannot get smallpox from being vaccinated. But they do have a chance of side effects, as minor as localized pain at the site of the shot to sometimes fatal encephalitis. It's been estimated that one to two people per million would die and or could die and approximately 17 to 20 people per million would have serious uh, side effects from the virus. For the most part, the side effects are minor and the person vaccinated is only contagious to others with compromised immune systems for three to four weeks. The strength of the vaccine can last five to ten years or beyond. But Weekly says this vaccination plan should more than prepare the U.S. in case of a diagnosis. Smallpox is diagnosed anywhere in the world. Uh, we're under an emergency situation. We need to immunize the population in the United States in a very short period of time of like three to five days. Uh, plans are in progress or in being developed nationwide, statewide, and also locally to accomplish this. Weekly says at this point, you should not feel the need to get the vaccine. And hopefully you will never feel the need to be immunized against smallpox. Christy Bettine, KTIV News Channel 4. Smallpox vaccination stopped in the U.S. in 1972. Both Sioux City hospitals say vaccinations for their employees could start in the next few months. State health officials say there are no plans to vaccinate the general public. Protests today on Capitol Hill. Parents say Congress has stripped them of their right to sue vaccine makers over injuries to their kids. Kathy Kilpatrick says her six-year-old daughter's autism was caused by a preservative in a routine vaccine. But she says a provision attached to a law creating the Homeland Security Department closed the last legal avenue for parents to sue drug companies. Republicans backed the measure. Democrats want to repeal it. Matt? Thanks, Christy. Still ahead, the best of the worst. Mr. Blackwell's list of the world's worst dressed a little later on. A wedding hall full of family and friends, $500. A breathtaking wedding cake, $250. A delicious catered meal, $1,950. A gorgeous wedding dress, $2,500. A room full of beautiful flowers, $1,000. Pictures and video from Reynolds, Siouxland's premier digital photography studio, priceless. ATIV News Channel 4 follows federal communication guidelines for broadcasting children's programming on Saturday mornings. Designed to serve the educational and informational needs of children ages 9 through 14. Copies of the FCC Children's Reports are available for public viewing during regular business hours at the KTIV Studios, 3135 Floyd Boulevard, or on our website at KTIV.com. Two tastes were made for each other. This is it. A deluxe bacon cheeseburger and a creamy A&W root beer float. Get together with the perfect pair. All American food, A&W. A&W. Behind the sign of Woodland Realty, you'll find the loveliest doors in Siouxland. There's one door waiting for you. An older home with gracious charm. A new home waiting for your touch. For over 20 years, Woodland Realty has been opening these doors. 
and we'd like to help you with all the professional services you'll need. Making you number one. Woodland Realty. May we open the door for you? Welcome back. The city has given a clean bill of health to a problem-plagued downtown high-rise. Inspectors went through the Badger Row building this morning and removed the red tags put in place back in October. News Channel 4's Bruce Scheid has the story. City Inspection Services Manager David Brown and the man in charge of the Badger Row building, Dan Songer of the Camelot Corporation, went from floor to floor and room to room. They were verifying corrections to about 100 city building code deficiencies. Problems ranged from improper electrical wiring to inadequate provisions for fire escapes. They came to light back in October after the building's elevators failed. They've since been repaired and inspected. Now, so have the other code deficiencies. The action removes red tags the city had posted in the Badger Row building. The main impact is that they're no longer under, under threat of any additional enforcement action as far as my office is concerned. Dan Songer acknowledges the image of the Badger Row building has been tarnished. He says he accepts full responsibility for that. What do you take? It, it was a quite experience. And to, um, it was something um, that's good for the building because we really substantially upgrade the safety issue on the uh, fire escape, on the boiler system. Uh, our boiler system is probably one of the safest ones in the entire city. Songer says it cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to correct the building code deficiencies. In Sioux City, Bruce Scheid, KTIV, News Channel 4. But the Badger Rose troubles might not be over. The building's owners still owe Woodbury County and the city of Sioux City more than $37,000 in back taxes and assessments. Gateway's earnings warning weighed heavily on the market today. After hitting a daily low of $2.71, Gateway stock rallied to finish the day at $2.96 per share. That's 21 cents off Tuesday's closing price of more than $3. The computer maker is looking at a loss of 18 to 19 cents per share in the fourth quarter. That's much larger than the expected 13 cent loss. For Siouxland's first look at news and weather, wake up to News Channel 4 today, tomorrow morning at 5.30. Here's Al Jones with a preview. The new year brings a new chance to reinvest, to wipe the slate clean after a rough 2002 and start over again. We'll have three quick, painless ways to protect your money in the new year. That's tomorrow morning on News Channel 4 Today, starting at 5.30. Brad's here now, and the Hawkeyes need to uh, break this losing streak. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Hawkeyes haven't won a Big Ten road game in almost two years. The Hawks were at Northwestern tonight, where they've lost two straight games. Those highlights are just ahead. And the Muskies try to figure out a way to win at home as they play River City. Plus, our Channel 4 champion comes from Charter Oak U. Sports is next. Hey, don't miss the Winter Iowa Games where there's Arctic action for everyone. There's figure skating and basketball. Ice hockey. How about basketball? How about roller hockey? Jim, how about basketball? Snowboarding. Basketball. Indoor soccer. And basketball. Snow skiing. Hey, Jim, what about basketball? Like I said, there's something for everyone. The Winter Iowa Games, February 7th, 8th, and 9th in Dubuque. Call 888-777-8881 or visit iowagames.org. Next time on an all-new John Wall Show, stay-at-home dads, their trials and tribulations. It's hard work. It takes dedication. There is nothing they can't handle. Uh, do cooking, cleaning, vacuuming. From dirty diapers to potty training. I'm going to tell you something. You are a pro. I had this routine down pat. It takes a macho man and a real good guy to stay home and do what you do. Next time on an all-new John Wall Show. Thursday at 2.30 on KTIV Channel 4. More feuding than a mob meeting. You guys aren't together anymore? But she trusts you enough to bring you back to win her the money. More relatives than a Greek wedding. What a great family. You're still talking to each other. More surprises than a high school reunion. Name something that's hard to do standing up. Making love. The all-new Family Feud with host Richard Karn. Survey says don't miss Family Feud. Weekdays at 4.30 on KTIV News Channel 4. Jewish mother. Um, guilt. Yes. Trying to lose weight, so I'm going to Waiting, do Waiting, dividing. Am I going to pull you? Swim. I'm doing this at the gym. Uh, oh, my God. Fine. 
things that sexy women in fast cars might have in common. <laughs> they both look good with their tops down. <laughs> Weekdays at 4 on PTIV Channel 4. Close captioning of News Channel 4 is made possible by MultiCare Physicians Group. Welcome back. It might be hard to believe, but Iowa has not won a Big Ten road game in almost two years. The streak reached 12 straight losses. Heading into tonight's conference opener at Northwestern, Iowa's lost by 13 and by 8 in Evanston the last two seasons. Steve Alford's club led 38-36 at halftime, came out firing in the second half. Freshman to freshman, Jeff Horner to Greg Bruner, gets undercut, still dunks it. That's a nice play. Iowa shot 53% for the game from the field. Then Iowa gets their biggest lead of the night. Sean Sondeleiter with the fadeaway bank, 61-45, Iowa by 16. Northwestern goes on a 10-0 run to make it close. Then Jared Reiner from Trip, South Dakota gets the hoop and the hack. He had 16 rebounds. The lead is up to eight. Free throws were a problem down the stretch, but Iowa does have enough. Chauncey Leslie for two, and Iowa cuts, uh, wins their Big Ten opener tonight, 68-63. to The Musketeers also were trying to snap a losing streak. Sioux City has lost three straight games at the Auditorium in seven, seven of their last ten overall. The Muskies battled the River City Lancers down at the Auditorium. Sioux City fell behind 2-0 very early in the first period and never led. Late in the first, Sioux City on the power play. Shot is wide and covered up. Muskies were outshot 12-6 in the period. Trailed 2-0 after one. Second period action now. Muskies outplayed, but B.J. Greaves, the big hit on Tim Cook, but that was about it for the highlights. Muskies had three power plays in the second period and still managed only six shots. Nathan Schwartzbauer's shot has stopped 2-0 Lancer, Lancers after two. Sioux City would score twice in the third period on goals by Grant Gechner Zoller, but it wouldn't be enough. River City wins at 3-2. Muskies have now lost four straight at home. They play in Lincoln Friday. They'll be back home on Saturday to play Cedar Rapids. As of Monday, the girls at Charo Cute had seven wins this season. The Bobcats have never won more than seven games in a season since Iowa went to the five-player format. A lot of that success has to do with this week's News Channel 4 champion, Kayla Kuhlman. Brad Ryerson has the story. For the Bobcats, Kayla Kuhlman, this has been a familiar sound so far this season. She's averaging 21 points a game, and she's only a freshman. Michaela credits her parents for her early success. I've gone to a lot of tournaments, and my mom and dad put tons of time in for this. And my dad probably knows a lot about, he knows tons, he's taught me probably everything I know. Getting this early start will make career marks like 1,000 points very accessible. But her main goals focus on the Charter Oak U team and her post-high school career. Definitely the state tournament. We, want, we all want to go play basketball in college. I think right now she's, she's got the potential to be a top-notch Division I player. And, and uh, she said before, she really likes basketball. Uh, she's a good athlete all around. She's uh, our pitcher on her softball team, was third team all-state as an eighth grader. So I think she could have her pick either one, but uh, basketball is her first love. With Kayla and two other freshmen in the top eight of this year's squad, the next few years could be good ones for the Cats. There are uh, seven other freshman girls that have uh, played a lot, uh, will get to play a lot this year, and uh, I have no problem starting five right now uh, that can, uh, can come in and compete at the varsity level. So we're, we're looking forward not only to the end run this year, but uh, also uh, the next uh, four years, three and a half with her uh, coming up. In Charter Oak, Iowa, Brad Ryerson, KTIV News Channel 4 Sports. And the Bobcats will host Manning on Friday. Scores from tonight from the college courts. Northwestern's women beat Dort, and the men also win 79-73 over the defenders. Sioux Falls beats Mount Marty in women's play. Sioux Falls also wins the men's game 76-68. And Dakota Wesleyan women over Briarcliff by 12. High school basketball, Twin River Valley over Armstrong Ringstead. Pocahontas beats the Pomeroy Palmer girls. Rockwell City Litton over West Bend Mallard. The Pomeroy Palmer guys rank second. They beat Pokey 71-48. Wrestling, Emmitsburg Armstrong Ringstead over Spirit Lake. The E-Hawks also beat Storm Lake and Spirit Lake over Storm Lake in that double duel. Hall Western over Sheldon on the mat. Lamars beat Sheldon and then Lamars over Hall Western 69-10. Esterville Lincoln Central downs Cherokee. Spencer with another strong team. They beat Esterville and Spencer over Cherokee 65-17. And on the college mats, Northwestern over Briarcliff 41-6. And finally, Tampa Bay's Derek Brooks is the AP NFL Defensive Player of the Year. He led the NFL with three interception returns for touchdowns. 
Also scored on a fumble recovery. The linebacker topped the Buccaneers with 170 tackles, had a career-high five interceptions. Miami's Jason Taylor finished second in the balloting with 11 votes. So four touchdowns for a defensive player. <laughs> Not bad. You deserve to be player of the year. You sure do. Thanks, Brad. Yep. Back in a bit. Premiering this Thursday, seven ex-superstars are forced to share one house. For roommates, I am a cult phenomenon. Their glory days are gone, and now life's a little different. I think we're going grocery shop. They're all buying food. It's not enough for seven people. I don't eat normal food. Just shut up. Is there taxes on food? Yes. Is that new? The surreal life. It's hard at work week on Weakest Link. Would I lie to you, and here comes the rain again, are hits by what British pop rock duo? The Rhythmics. Correct. And it's time for these radio DJs to face the music. I'm from Chicago. Uh, what would you say blows more, the win in Chicago or this team? Who got their brain for free in one of those radio call-in things? <laughs> on the next Weakest Link, Thursday at 3.30 on KTIV Channel 4. Finally tonight, fashion guru Mr. Blackwell is finally out with his worst dress list of the year. And some of those on the list, we have Princess Anne and Donatella, Ver Donatella Versace. Well, the best of the worst is former Playboy playmate Anna Nicole Smith. Ozzy Osbourne's daughter Kelly took second place on the list, followed by pop singer Shakira, Pink, Christina Aguilera, and a few actresses including Cameron Diaz and Meg Ryan. So, kind of a surprising list. You've got a fashion guru who's on there, <laughs> who's on the worst dress list. So Still not the honor you want. Yeah. Ron? Lots of wind and lots of clouds tomorrow. Much colder, only in the low 30s. Thank you, Ron. Brad, Sioux City Bandits football team will introduce two new players tomorrow. Look forward to that. Thanks, Brad. Thanks for joining us. Jay Leno's next. We'll see you back here tomorrow night. Story behind his return to Broadway. Plus, from the practice, Steve Harris, next live. Monday morning at 9 on Channel 12.